Hello, my name's Nicola Phillips and I'm the author of The Profligate Son. This is the story of a relationship between a wealthy East India Company merchant in the early 19th century and his teenage son. On the face of it, it looks like this is a classic Regency rapes progress. The father is conservative, traditional, middle class. He earns a lot of money. The son has all the advantages, goes to public school, mixes with the landed gentry, but he picks up the morals, the habits and the manners of the higher class and he wants to run with the elite set. To do that, he has to dress fashionably, ride fast horses, party hard, have sexual liaisons with prostitutes and he even buys an exquisite pair of duelling pistols which after a while he obviously ends up having to use. The problem with acquiring all the accoutrements of becoming an upper-class English gentleman is that it costs, and it costs a lot of money. Now, in the early 19th century, a father was supposed to provide his son with all the necessary but not luxury goods to enable him to maintain his social status. Well, as you can probably imagine, father and son did not agree at all on what was considered necessary. So it wasn't long before Mr. Jackson refused to pay for William's extravagant, as he saw it, habits. We're all very aware of spending on credit. Credit cards are ubiquitous now. In the early 19th century, credit notes performed much the same tasks, so it was easy for William to keep signing away bits of paper. But what his father was concerned about is who is responsible? Is it the weakness of the young man who spends the money? Is it the shopkeepers who are desperate to sell their goods, particularly to the son of a wealthy gentleman? Was it the loan sharks that gave, the, gave him the money to, to do this? Or is it the culture, the society that he lived in at the time?